What is going on guys? I'm Consumer Tech Review and today we're going to be doing a review of the Epo Maker TH80 and TH66. If at any point during the video you want to check out these exact same keyboards, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada and international links and thank you to Epo Maker for sponsoring today's video. However, they only told me do an honest review so even though this is paid for and is sponsored, these are all my thoughts and this is a totally honest review. Epo Maker is just helping out the channel and that is awesome. Alright, so let's jump into the first section which is what is in the box. All right, so right away on both, you get a quick start guide, you get a keycap puller, you then get a switch puller, you get a braided USB type C cable, and then right on top, you get the keyboards. Now here's where things get a little bit different between the TH80 and the TH66. The TH66 has a thick dust cover, which is very cool, while the TH80 does not. Now do keep in mind, these are exactly the same price. So even though you get, well, a dust cover on the TH66 and not on the TH80, uh, you're still paying the same price. So it does make sense that the TH66 would just get a little bit more. Continuing on with that, the TH80 has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle inside of a compartment in the case, while the TH66 also has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle but it is not in a compartment in the case, so it's just in the box. All right, but let's move on to form factor and build quality. And before we do, I have an announcement, giveaway alert. I am doing a giveaway every single week. So if you wanna win a Gas 67, find a two second clip in this video that will give you the rules and the requirements to get entered in the giveaway. Don't worry, it's super easy. So just watch the video in completion. You'll find that clip and then you can enter the giveaway. But Let's move on to the form factor and build quality. All right, so the case on both is pretty much exactly the same. I have the TH66 in a kind of transparent-y black, kind of a smoky black, and then the TH80 in a solid white. Both of them are two-piece plastic shells that kind of clip together. Now, even though these are plastic cases, the bottom piece of the case is very thick, like way thicker than I expected. Even when you bend it side to side, you would expect a plastic case that's a clip-in, so it doesn't have a whole lot of that uh, vertical rigidity. It's very rigid. So the actual plastic is thicker than you would expect, uh, and you also notice this like as soon as you pick it up because it's like both of these are very heavy, much heavier than you would expect. Now as well, for the plate, these are both metal plates, and they're not just like a flat metal plate. It actually curves over on the top and the bottom. We've seen this on a few other keyboards, but again, this adds to that rigidity. This is a very solid feeling typing experience, and that plate is very thick, and it's incredibly rigid because it kind of dips over on the top and bottom. That again also adds to that weight because this plate is definitely heavier than most. Now, both keyboards also have knobs, which is awesome. They are a red knob and it's totally metal. Uh, there's a piece of plastic just inside of it just so it connects to the actual, like, I guess the mounting place for the knob. But uh, besides that little tiny piece of plastic, the whole thing is metal and in your hand, it actually feels quite heavy. So that is very nice. As well, for wobble, well, there's very, very little. Some would consider this no wobble at all. As well as that, it does have nice tactile bumps. I wouldn't say these are the greatest tactile bumps in the world, but they are quite nice. As good as a GMMK Pro. And to finish it up, they both have dual stage risers, which is great. That's something that we see on more premium boards, but these have it, which is awesome. They also have the on and off switch because these are wireless on the back left side, but that's like behind it on the bottom of the board. So that's very cool. All right, let's move on to mounting style and dampening because this is very interesting. There's a lot of good things here. Now for the mounting style, this is kind of gasket mounted, but it's kind of not gasket mounted. It's kind of its own thing. So basically there are like what you would consider gaskets on the case, six on the top, seven on the bottom. Now these are like a rubbery kind of gasket. However, it's not only suspended by the gaskets the metal plate also touches the back of the case. So it doesn't move really at all when it's in the case. So those gaskets kind of act more like dampeners for the plate, which actually does a great job because we don't have any plasticky sound, but we'll get to that with the sound. So that's kind of the mounting style. This is actually really good because modding it is very easy because, well, except for the TH80 that has two screws, the TH66 has no screws at all. You literally just pop the case open and you can get right to modding, which is awesome. Okay, so like I said, the TH80 to get open the case, you have to flip up the flip up risers and then there's a screw in each side and then you pop the case apart. Now you might say, well, snap in cases typically have problems. That's true, but this one is not a flush case on the back. There are actual, well, you can actually see the tabs when you flip it over which is a very good thing because if you get something in there, a little piece of plastic 
a pry bar, really you could use whatever, a flathead screwdriver, uh, and you can pop them off very easily. This mitigates uh, the chance of snapping those off. I opened both of these uh, before even taking the B-roll and we had no problems with those plastic tabs getting hurt or anything like that because they're fully visible and you can literally put something in there, push them out uh, and get it open. So because of this, opening up the snap-in case is very easy. As well, when it's together, it doesn't feel like it's some plasticky junk that just got snapped together. This thing is solid when it's put together, but at the same time, because of the design, it makes it easy to get into. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds here. Now for the plate and PCB, both have six screws on the back of the PCB that hold it together. So really, if you are gonna mod this, you're only gonna need to be screwing six to eight screws, which if you know anything about keyboards, that's, well, very few to mod, completely mod a keyboard. That's pretty cool. Now for the dampening, both have EVA foam between the plate and the PCB and EVA foam in the case. As well as this, both have rubber space bar dampeners that get popped in from the top. This is a good thing because these are plate mounted stabilizers, meaning that if they had dampening that was inside of the case, you would have to remove all of the switches and remove the plate and the PCB from each other to get that space bar out. But because they use the push in rubber ones, all you need to do to take out all of your stabilizers is literally just pull those up. So that's much better for modding and ease of access to getting to your stabilizers. All right, but let's move on to keycaps. This is very important for any board. Now these are EpoMaker's own Theory MDA Profile Die Sub PBT keycaps. A lot of good stuff happening here. Number one, the best thing is these things are thick. They are very nice and thick they have a nice texture and they feel very high quality. Now as well, there's another colorway that's available called the Monet colorway, which is kind of like a gradient pastel-y colorway. Uh, and some of these colorways are only available with some switches and some are available with other switches. But overall, having the thickness of these keycaps um, and then the overall quality of the keycap, and then the printing is pretty good, especially considering the price. I mean, this is very good. These are, I think, thicker than like what you would see from Akko. And because of that, the sound definitely reflects and when you get this in hand, you're like, wow, this is a good typing experience out of the box. But moving on to switches, hot swap ability and hot swap direction. All right, for the theory colorway, you have a choice between five switch options. And for the Monet colorway, you have a switch options between two switch options. Now let's go over theirs. For the theory colorway, all of the switches are Gateron Pro switches. Now these are pre-lubed. So if you've ever used um, Keychron boards that have those Gateron G Pro switches, same type of idea here. Pre-lube switches from Gateron, pretty smooth, nice that it's lubed out of the box. And you have a choice between red, blue, brown, yellow, and black. I got my keyboards, the TH66, with red Gateron Pro switches and the TH80 with Gateron black switches. Now for the Monet colorway, you have a choice between Epomaker's own switches which are the Epomaker Flamingo and the Epomaker Budgerigar. I think that's how you say it. I might be butchering that name. However, I have really good experience with the Flamingo as well as the Tactile. So the Flamingo is linear, the Budgerigar, I think that's how you say it, is Tactile. Now the Tactile one is a very heavy bump uh, and I personally really like that. That's actually the switches that I'm running on my daily driver uh, on my editing desk. So the keyboard I use every day to edit these videos, those are the switches I'm using. And then recently on my Gas 67 build, I use the Flamingo switches that I think we hand lubed. And I was very surprised with how good those were. And if you saw that video, I highly recommended them in that video. So both of these switch options are fantastic. And overall, I think I prefer these switch options over the Gateron Pro switches 100% but I prefer the colorway of the Theory over the Monet, but both are great. All right, now for hot swap ability, these are both hot swappable with three and five pin switches. So if you wanna put any switch in there, you absolutely should because these keyboards are actually, even though they're snapped together, these are very good for modding because again, it's easy to snap this open and close without it wearing out kind of those plastic uh, kind of pins. or not pins, but things that hold it together. Now for the hot swap direction, it gets a little bit interesting here. First of all, the TH80 is south facing LEDs across the board, which is great, which means uh, you don't have to worry about any switch interference at all. You can use whatever profile keycap you want, cherry profile keycaps. For the TH66, it actually has north facing LEDs for the top number row and then south facing LEDs for all of the rest. Now you might say, well, that's a problem if I wanna use cherry profile keycaps, but it is not. The number row up there does not have any interference with cherry profile keycaps. So you can still put cherry profile keycaps on there 
with the top row being north facing and all the rest of the rows being south facing, you do not have an issue. We already tested it, you're good to go. So this won't change any of the compatibility, so that is good. So basically they're both, in all intents and purposes, they're south facing LED keyboards, which is very cool at this price point with everything that it gives you. And I know that's why a lot of you guys told me to review these keyboards. All right, now let's move on to the stabilizers. Now one thing that's great right away is these stabilizers do not need to be clipped. That's something that I didn't actually expect, but they don't need to be clipped, so that's great. Now, these are also greased from the factory. Now, for the tuning, these did have a slight tick out of the box, but the stabilizers overall are good, and they're easily tuned and relubed, which is what I did. And here's what they sound like before and after a tune and relube. Take a listen. And that is how they sound. Now the typing sound and feel, let's get into it. The sound is actually quite nice out of the box. The switches are a factory lube, which definitely helps. The keycaps give a louder but refined sound. This isn't super loud, but the keycaps due to them being thicker sound really good. There's also quite a bit of dampening, but not the most unique or quietest dampening out there, which gives a really nice sound for most people. And most people will kind of like that sound. It's kind of middle of the road. This is also exciting to me as adding different dampenings or mods like the tape mod can really change the sound of this keyboard. As well, the thick boy plate mixed with the dampening gives a very solid typing feel without sounding or feeling like a plasticky board, which again is surprising because of that case. A lot of cases like this typically sound and feel a little bit plasticky. However, this one, it just doesn't. This board is actually very unique because it's good for both people that wanna do absolutely nothing to their keyboards and just wanna buy a keyboard they can use every day that's more like a custom. And it's fantastic for modders because of a lot of those things, especially how to get the case open and how easy it is to mod this. And to mod this to sound absolutely exceptional, you wouldn't really need to do that much to it which is exciting. That's why I personally want to mod this very badly. All right, but don't take my word for it. Let's get the sound test and take a listen to the TH80 and TH66. Take a listen. And that is how they sound. All right, now RGB. Now, as you would expect, it's very good here. Perky lighting, tons of modes, very bright. If you did wanna do more RGB kind of keycaps, you absolutely could. Just remember, these are south facing LEDs, so I'd go with something more like clear keycaps or something like that, something that doesn't necessarily need that north facing LED to kind of do the shine through action, if that makes sense. All right, but now for the battery and connectivity because both of these, both the TH66 and the TH80 are wireless with a 2200 milliamp hour battery. Both of them have the same battery, which is expected as the price is the same. Both have Bluetooth 5.0 with three connections so they can be connected to three different devices and switch between those simultaneously. And it has a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle, which is great for gaming. So if you do wanna game with this, but still have it be wireless, that is what you're gonna wanna go with which is fantastic. That's a must for me. You guys know this by this point. Then lastly, there is a USB type C port on the back left side for charging or connection. All right, I do also wanna mention there's gonna be an updated version of both the TH80 and the TH66 that will be released around November. So far, what I know is there's gonna be an ISO layout added. The wireless module on the PCB is gonna be slightly upgraded so you can connect to the software with Bluetooth and the 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle. And the software is gonna support editing and a few other things like that. But lastly, and probably the most important section, price and value. Now on Amazon, at the time of filming, both of these are $89.99. For that price, you're getting a ton of pre lube switch options, wireless connectivity with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle for gaming, let's go, a full metal knob, thick PBT keycaps, great RGB, and south facing LEDs. For the price, this is a fantastic option, and also really one that I very badly want to mod. Again, if you want to check out either of these keyboards, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I really want to mod, especially the TH80. I feel like that one would be 
So fun to mod, do some tape mod to it, put some PE foam in there. That's what I do every time I know. Maybe I do something different, maybe a tactile build. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, this is a consumer tech review and I'll see you guys in the next video.